Hi, and welcome back again to Top Solid 7. In this next video, we're going to learn how to use swarf machining to machine the side faces of the blower wheel fan blades. To begin with, what I'm going to do is from the previous operation, I'm going to go to my entities tree and I'm going to deactivate that sketch. Now, just as a fun little side fact to learn, this is an important sketch, right? This is driving the center of that previous operation. So, so you know, you can always do a slow double left click or select F2 on your keyboard and rename the sketch. And I'm going to say sketch for five axis sweeping. This way I know exactly what that sketch was for. Awesome. And come back here to NC operations. Now we have done again that face. Now what we want to do is we want to machine this face and this face. But ideally what I would like to do, I could have the tool come down and swarf machine this and then pick up and wrap it and then swarf machine this back up. But I thought it would be way more fun if we came down, turned around dynamically and came back in. But to do that, you're kind of going to have to create some guide curves that will help drive the tool path. All right, cool. So let's begin with that. I'm going to switch to CAD mode. And in CAD mode, the very first thing I want to do is I want to build my curves. Okay. Now, again, this is the face that we're focusing on right now. And it really doesn't matter because this is going to be run after the other one, but this is where I want to work. So I'm going to zoom way up on it for a second here. And I'm going to go ahead and go back to my 3D sketch. When I get to my 3D sketch, I'm going to start by selecting up here, going that way. Perfect. And then over here, coming that way. Also perfect. But I also want to get this curve and this curve down here. Now I want to join the two curves together. And there's a couple of different ways that we can do that. Okay. The first would be to go to spline and choose blend. If I select this curve to this curve, you can see that I have a blended curve happening. If I validate that, the software creates what we call a tangent comb, and you can play with the size of the tangent comb. I can come out here and say, you know what, let's make that a quarter of an inch. Let's make that a quarter of an inch, just to give room for the tool to do its thing. That's one way. Another way, let's go ahead and delete that, would be to use sketch operations. Now, we can do the same thing down here. I'm going to do a blend. And in this case, we switch to the sketch operation mode. And I'm going to select here to there. And you'll see there's little grips here. So I can pull these grips and dynamically kind of play with the tangency level, which is kind of cool. Either operation is going to do what you want it to do. It just depends if you want to be in the solving level of the sketch or the operation level of the sketch. Perfect. Now we have the two profiles that we need. I'm going to go ahead and validate out of that sketch. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is purely, purely, purely optional. Okay? You could do this dynamically within the toolpath, but sometimes, and I think especially when you're learning, it can be a little bit easier to do ahead of time. I'm going to manually create my sync points for synchronizing my toolpath. And this is just, again, more of a way for me to show you more cool functions of Top Solid in one simple video. So what I want to do is I'm going to go add some points. And I'm going to start by adding some points just at some key places, like at the end of that segment. Make sure that's good. I'm going to hit Enter on my keyboard so I can do this quickly. That segment, that segment, and so on. Okay? And it's just so that I have a visual of where my synchronization points are. Now down here, this is a single segment profile, so in order to get those, I'm going to go down to projected point instead. And I'm going to be projected on profile. And for my first point, I'm going to say I want to take this point, project it to that profile. And you can see it's a perpendicular projection. Again, I'm going to tap enter on my keyboard so I can do this quickly. Perfect. We can project this one down like that. Now, I don't like that at all. So let's get rid of that. Let's come over to here. Down to that profile, cool. Let's go down to here. Down to that profile, also cool. And I'm going to go back to just a standard point really quick because I want to be there and there. And I promise this will make sense in a few minutes. The next thing that I want to do 
is I want to take this face, copy it as a surface, and extend it so that my tool path has something to check against. So to do that, I'm going to go to my Surface tab, and I'm going to choose Faces. And I'm going to choose Faces with Trimming Path in mind. So I'm going to select this, and, you know, this is nice, but looking at that extension, you see it's blowing up. It's not really blowing up, it's just super extending, which is kind of fun. So I'm going to change my mind, and I'm going to go back to this. I'm going to grab right here, and I just want this as a simple surface. And then what I can do is I can come to this command here called extension. I'm going to expand this and say I want a linear extension while modifying the face of that. And you can see it's extending out. Maybe I'll go a little bit longer on that side. 3 eighths maybe. Perfect. And let's do the same thing up here. And here we don't need to go as far. Probably 0.2 is enough. Perfect. Now I have everything I need to make my tool path. Let's switch back to cam mode. Because I'm a good user, I accomplished a major task. I'm going to go ahead and hit save really quickly here. And that's just going to allow me to lock into the database all the geometry and things that I've done. And now we're going to go to Swarf Machining to finish this cut. Here we go. So I'm going to right click in space and I'm going to come down to Swarf. Again, I'm going to stick with the same ball and mill I've been using. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to switch to by curves. Now the first thing I have to do when I do this is I have to go select my top curve. So that's going to be this one. And then my bottom curve. That's going to be this one. Again, make sure these arrows are flowing in the same direction. And all you have to do is double click on the arrow to invert it. This arrow points to the side of the finish. So if it was facing this way, you definitely would want to double click to invert it because you want it to always face to the side of the finish. Perfect. I'm going to go here and add a check face of this surface. Nice. And from there, let's go ahead and maybe just take our first test cut. Okay, we'll take a look and see what the software did. You can see it's leading on, it's doing its cut. It's not horrible. It's following and it's leading out. But just in case you need to, I want to also explain to you how you can control the synchronization of the toolpath. So let's go double click and edit the toolpath. Let's go back to our geometry button, okay? And here again, you get to see everything. So now what I'd like to do is I would like to go to synchronization. And here, this is showing you how the software automatically attempted to synchronize. And it's not horrible, like I said, but you can see how that tool is going to be leaning off the blade as it comes off. And maybe we want the tool to be more vertical or oriented to that edge of the model. Okay. So to do that, what we're going to do is switch to point to point. Now here, it's going to ask you to choose the second point. And you can see it's highlighting the curve it wants you to modify. So I'm going to modify that point and then that point. I'm going to modify that point to that point, and so on and so forth. And all this is going to allow us to do is to be really, really specific with Top Solid and say, okay, this is how we want to synchronize this toolpath. Perfect. I hit the red X there, and now if we look at those synchronizations, they're beautiful. And we've done a really, really good job controlling that toolpath. Now we're going to do one more quick thing. We're going to go to settings. We're going to go to our lead-in, lead-out. And we're going to add an overcut of, why not, 150 thousandths, a little more than the radius of the cutter. And now we have a really, really, really nice toolpath. And let's watch that simulation. And here I'm going to turn off the machine for a moment. And let's just watch the cutter come in and do its thing because sometimes it's a little bit easier, I think, to see things. So here that tool's coming. It's leading on. It's a good vector right there. And I'm going to pause it. I hit spacebar to pause. That looks beautiful. And now it's coming in. It's doing its thing. And look how smooth that cutter is moving. And it's all because of those synchronizations that we added. And you're done. Toolpath complete.